Well, from our house, Black Fit TV. Hello, guys. How's it going? We're, we're good, Hello, man. Good to, have, good to be here. So everybody's all excited to see how you guys are going. How you guys going to play Franklin? <laughs> 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 it's Black this three months. You know, we've been. You know, every every Thanksgiving that that photo of Franklin sitting by himself has always garnered attention. You yeah. know, and then we look at the trailer. <laughs> You know, and, and luckily we have that that little picture right there that says um, they're making it right. <laughs> yes, so sir. let's talk about Rob. Let's let's talk about waiting twenty plus years before Franklin's given a last name. <laughs> Off of you. Yeah, but that's, it's really interesting when when Franklin was brought into Peanuts. I was only six years old, and um, and I'm saying that because there are people who have heard about the last name thing about Schultz giving him my last name literally calling me and asking permission who think that I have somehow brought Franklin into the Peanuts cast and that's not accurate. I was a little child when Peanuts mm -hmm. came in, when Peanuts introduced Franklin. So 20 years later, I got syndicated. I was syndicated young. 26 is very young to have a contract to do a syndicated comic strip. And when I got my deal to do Jumpstar, it was with the same syndicate as Schultz. So I thought, wow, Peanuts and Jumpstar at the same syndicate. I'm going to become friends with, with, with Charles Schultz and my life's going to begin. So I, I, I leaned into my editor. Literally, we have the same editor. The ink is still wet in my contract. I leaned in to Sarah Gillespie. I say, Sarah, do me a favor. She said, what's that, Rob? Introduce me to Charles Schultz, would you? She goes, what? I said, could you please introduce me to Charles Schultz? She goes, no. I'm not doing that. I'm not here for that. Why don't you send him one of your comic strips? So I did. Fast forward. He loves it. When I, when I do finally meet him, this is about a year and a half later, it's framed, it's on his wall, and he tells me, because I'm suspicious of it, I can't believe it's up on his wall, you know what I mean? It's weird, you walk into Charlie, it's like walking into uh, a fantasy land, there's Snoopy, there's Charlie Brown, and then my, th it was weird, and he said, your strip is like peanuts. They both have great characters, that's the whole thing. Four years later, he asked my permission. Four years later, he said, I want to rename Franklin, Franklin Armstrong. Brother, pressure's on, Jack. <laughs> it's pressure's on. Craig, you know, <laughs> here we are now. So, you know, obviously we don't have a lot of time. Otherwise, I'll talk to you for about a half hour. I'll talk about uh, you know, this special coming up here. We've had a number of, of specials on Apple, but this one's particularly about Franklin. So, Craig, talk to me about, you know, not only the special, but the type of story you wanted to tell for the audience to get to know it. Oh, we, we're kind of rolling in right after the Marcy special and, and Marcy special has gotten rave reviews because we got to explore Marcy and her character and kind of learn more about her. Franklin was the same thing. We sat down for season two and we were outlined what we wanted to tell the stories of season two. Franklin rose to the top of the list. It's like we definitely wanted to do a Franklin story, but we knew it was going to be a very tricky one to do because we knew that people were going to look at this thing under a microscope, make sure it was handled right, make sure we handled Franklin's character right. And to lift him off the page of the comic strip and make him come to life is a different story than for my dad just, you know, writing a couple jokes and having him interact. So we spent a lot of time kind of crafting the story. And we knew that the three white boys, which is myself, my son, Brian, and Neil, were not going to be able to do this on our own. And we had to seek out a black writer to come on board. And, you know, obviously we're dealing with Franklin. We have Armstrong. So we could contact Rob Armstrong and say, hey, would you join the team and, and write this with us? And from there, we built the story. And we built the story of a relationship, a relationship with two kids. And I kind of go back to, I did an interview with, with Kid President years ago. And when we came up with the conclusion that the world would be so much better if kids ran the world and not adults. And that's kind of way this Charlie Brown Franklin relationship kind of forms, you know, that kids just embrace each other for the simplicity of who they are. And that anybody can form a relationship. And that's kind of what we did. And then Franklin eventually finds a home in this crazy neighborhood of his. <clears throat> and here, here you come, Raymond. You know, you've got, you know, you've, you've done animated films before. And this one, obviously, is special because, like I said, people are going to be watching this and see, okay, how are they telling the story? How is uh, Franklin depicted? You know, why, you know, in the beginning of the, of the episode, I'm like, oh, he got that kid. He's the one that's always messing up. But then we, it, things change around, you know. So what was it like for you to put uh, direct this episode? Or, you know, events. <laughs> you know, so off the bat, I wanted to make sure that our crew was diverse, that there were there were people that um, could have uh, different viewpoints. So that while we were making this and working on it and, you know, with this special, we, we would do different versions of it and slowly, like, you know, build on it. 
it, it sparked a lot of conversations. And, and I always say like, as a director, my job is to tell people what to do, but especially on this one, my job was to listen yeah. and to hear the different perspectives of the different generations and, and what, you know, what Franklin meant to, uh, to them and, and try to find a way to incorporate those things that felt authentic. Uh, so it was a great experience, great experience. And then there's, like I said, you know, we have that table scene. You know, whose idea was to put the table scene in and, and make things right? <laughs> we had to do something. <laughs> I, I said that came, that came from my son. He's, he's the one that's been on the internet and hearing all the comments over the years. <laughs> and when he saw that scene and so forth, he said, we can fix this. And then it's a matter of just organically, how do we make that fit into the story? And that's where we got together as, as writers and made it kind of seamless in the, in the plot of the story. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, you know, Rob, coming back to you, uh, now that we have a last name, you know, Franklin Armstrong, you know, what do we want audiences to get out of this to, to dispel whatever may have been talked about for years? And hopefully we have enough of an audience watching this because that way they can truly know Franklin. Because like I said, all we go, all we go by these days are images, yeah. you know, yeah. <laughs> you know, but now you have a story out there that people can hopefully watch and guess, okay, we know all about Franklin. You yeah. know, and then uh, you look on the internet, it was, the last time he was talked about was 1999. <laughs> yeah. One of the things I wanted to do, which uh, uh, it, it was it was um, it was a conversation. What didn't happen fast. I wanted Franklin to break the fourth wall uh, to explain the Peanuts characters have never turned to face the camera to talk. The camera's invisible and just watches them action from a distance. Just watches them. I wanted him to turn close to the camera and talk to the camera because I thought that only that only by doing that would he have a chance to explain who and what he's all about and to have people and have the audience address him at the same time to receive him face to face no noise no internet no nonsense I think that that the damage that was done by having misconceptions about the Thanksgiving table scene were serious and it, it could have caused the misconceptions to continue even through this special, thinking it was just uh, a tokenism or it was some kind of thing. So I wanted him, I wanted the confrontation to be direct. And, and I'm so happy that stayed in. That's one of the most important things about this special that distinguish it from other Peanut specials. We now have Franklin's accounting of who he is and what he values. And no one can fault him anymore or or blame him for the past. Rightly said. Gentlemen, it's been a pleasure. Let's make things happen. Congratulations on this special. We were looking forward to seeing it. Thank you. Take care. Thank you. Take care.